welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Today, we're talking about a character couched in a six-issue miniseries. Uh, today, we're talking about Jubilee. That's Ooh. right. Everyone's favorite X-person uh, is Jubilee. I like Jubilee. I well, also... people like Jubilee. Yeah, no, but she's nobody's favorite. And guess what? I guarantee you we'll find a when bunch of them. So, when I was a little girl... She was awesome? She was awesome. Like, that's the point. That Jubilee is a great ride-along character for the X-Men. She's a character that originally was in the form of uh, Kitty Pride and Shadowcat back in the 80s. They created mm. her to be the ride-along character. She also, of course, gravitated towards Wolverine, and the two of them had merry adventures together in the 90s. You know, Kitty Pride kind of assumed the role of more of a maternal adult kind of character. And so they're like, we need a new ride-along character. We need somebody that the Generation Xers are going to want to identify with. And so they created Jubilee. And Jubilee also, coincidentally, had a natural attraction to Wolverine. Not in a sexual way or in a weirdo, kind of creepy, rogue movie kind of way. But uh, they went on Merry Adventures as well. And in fact, Wolverine's the one who brought uh, Jubilee into the X-Men in the first place. I could definitely see Jubilee being... A character that a lot of people in the 90s identified with. Yeah. I remember Jubilee being a lot of people's least favorite. And I remember people being really kind of angry about Jubilee. Uh, especially peers. People who should have identified with Jubilee. I, I, I found a lot of them were just like resentful that they created a character. that like They, they thought it was obvious. Oh. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, so this is me. This is who you think I am. And this is who you think I'm supposed to be interested in. And uh, and I was the opposite. I was like, oh, cool. Like a young person. You know, it's like the invention of Robin. Oh, cool. A, a little guy who can hang out with Batman. I can identify with that. I'm a little guy. I'm a little guy and, and I want to hang out with Batman. And I'm certainly not Batman. Exactly. And I ain't no Batman. That's it's exactly. like, look, I'm not Wolverine. Yeah, right. You're not Wolverine. And you never will be. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing that I want to preface right off the bat. I grew up reading comics. Uh, I grew up reading some X-Men. I remember the invention of Jubilee, and I remember Jubilee being, you know, a character through the Marvel Universe. I am not a Jubilee expert. An Just, expert? I am not an expert on the X-Man Jubilee. Okay. All right? I know Jubilee, so my experience with Jubilee is just from reading books that she is in. So before you freak out about <laughs> how I don't know anything about Jubilee, please understand we're talking about a book that she was in, and I'm explaining a little bit of my context for the character. You're explaining it? Oh my god. Are you I'm excited. It? I'm going to excommunicate you from this couch. You know, I'm starting to think you only have me on because of the fact that this is a girl comic. It is not. Ethan is just, like, injured or something, so you're here. Bench yeah. him? Yeah. yeah. Extrapolate benched. from that. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'd get one in. <laughs> good call. As bad as it was. They're going to come up. I'm sorry. Keep the counter. So, Damn. uh... So Jubilee, but some context for where this book came from, because we're talking about Jubilee, the six issue miniseries written by Robert Kirkman. Walking Dead. Walking Dead, Marvel Zombies, Outcast, Irredeemable Ant Man. This Outcast. is a this is a jump. This is a leap. And All right. so let's talk a little bit about why this book exists. Uh, it takes place in a time. Where Jubilee has kind of been put through the ringer. So this is not like early 90s Jubilee. No. Maybe he needed to like take a break. Right. From just death and misery and yeah. adult situations and tell the story about this teenage, this teenage character. Yeah. I mean like, okay, so Jubilee was created in the 90s. She's obviously a byproduct of the 90s. If you watch the cartoon show, that's who she was. Uh, a mall babe who ate chili fries. And wore a giant raincoat. Which wore a giant raincoat. I, yeah. You know. And by the way, uh, so she was an orphan. She grew up in California. She was a, a homeless person. Uh, she ran away from her foster care and moved into the mall. She was as close to a character that they would have named Mall Rat as possible. This sounds like a very Californian character. It, it, oh, she was from California. Oh, okay. You know, Chinese American. And uh, lived in the mall and like learned all the tricks. You know what I mean? Like how to get free drinks and how to... You know, forage for food in the mall. Uh, and eventually... Did she sleep in the department store? I don't remember where she slept. Because, like, I thought that would be cool. Right? As a kid. I bet she started there and then she eventually found, like, actual comfort. She probably slept in, like, break rooms. Well, no, where couches in the department were. store they've got beds. That's true. But, but they're they not, cameras, like... Though. Yeah, but they're also... Well, back in, like, 1992, the cameras were probably pretty crappy and she could also use her mutant ability to produce oh, yeah. plasmoids to take out the cameras. Plasmoids? Yeah. 
she shoots fireworks. Uh, but actually, I was thinking it would also be really scary in a mall at night because it's entirely pitch black. Yeah. Well, then you use your plasmoids to light the way. That'd be the only way. Yeah. And it's also bright and see. colorful. Yeah. All right. Right. Now, there's probably emergency lights. I've never been in a mall after closing, so I don't know. I mean, I would imagine there are emergency lights if there's an emergency. No, like no, if someone I think, trips a fire door. Well, because like I think that malls are often patrolled at night, like after hours. I think that like security guards need to be able to see. I think they might do like a last walkthrough, but I don't think but someone's yeah. there entirely. I think there is. I think there's a night shift. I think there you are. You know, we're gonna who... get somebody who's like, I am. I a work mall. the night shift, and there are mall rats, and they are real, and they do sleep in the department store. I'll tell you that, and it's are terrible. They like, are they like RUSs? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're like mall rats of unusual size. I don't think they exist. <laughs> it's Jubilee. Yeah. <laughs> Zap. Zap. <laughs> I was going to say fizz. That's more appropriate. So Jubilee uh, was brought in by Wolverine, uh, went on some adventures, fought ninjas. Uh, she was... Fought ninjas? Yeah. You just try to gloss over ninjas. Well, okay. Uh, and you'd think that she'd be pretty crappy at that because she's some teenager who could shoot plasmoids. But they're saying she's Chinese American, so she has some innate ability or something. She's a gymnast. She has like Olympic level gymnast ability. That does not sound like the Jubilee she has like I know a, at all. Like a five in gymnastics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She she rolls twenties in dexterity. She's totally op. Like no, and, and yeah, they usually gloss over that fact and they bring it up in the Kirkman series. But I remember it was also a, a factor in the X Men series. Eventually, just to go over her whole thing, like so she was an X Man. Like immediately, she's brought into the X Men because you gotta, you know, and. Claremont and people didn't know what the hell to do with her and so right. often she was like kidnapped or she was said to stay and guard the base or oh, okay. you know she had her own adventures she would team up with Wolverine where she got to actually like kind of highlight Wolverine's gruffness you know Wolverine's like I gotta get the business done she was done. like an accessory yeah a flashy accessory she was even like similar colors yeah she had the blue shorts and the yellow raincoats yeah eventually uh, they felt bad for her and they gave eventually X-Men tried to capitalize on the Generation X teenage thing and create their own teen team of X-Men, which isn't really outside the realm of understanding for X-Men. They created X-Factor in the 80s for the same thing. Okay. Uh, A question about that. Yeah. Now, how many of these characters are actually teenage? Because while they're at the school, I didn't think that many of them were young. Yeah, and we knew that in the 90s... Jubilee was a teenager. Right. Like, she had to have been probably 15, 16. Uh, but, like, Iceman wasn't too far ahead. He was probably, like, 19, 20, 21. I know that, like, later on they would really play up the whole, like, everyone's... They would draw everyone really older and make them act a lot older, but I assume that the X-Men, you know, the core team in the 90s around Jubilee's era were probably in their mid-20s. Because they're getting married, they're holding down serious corporate jobs, like... They need to have some kind of experience. So uh, they felt bad, and also uh, Image was trying to make a book called Gen, called Gen X. You almost said Gen Thirteen. You did. Well, they t- it was going to be Gen Thirteen. So Image and Wildstorm are like, let's make a cool team book called Gen X, and then X Men's like, oh, you can't do that because we're thinking about making a book with X in the title, and we'll sue the shit out of you. We own all the X's. Yeah, we got it. We got a patent on X's, and so. Uh, and back then they were really, really litigious, and they got Aviarad and Toy Biz was very fa- was very much a factor back then, and so they were really like, no, we're merchandising the shit out of this. Meanwhile, Gen Thirteen, which would eventually they changed the name to, um, you know, they were incredibly marketable and were really popular, but didn't market the shit out of their toys. Like there were Gen Thirteen action figures, they made maybe two of them. They were working on a PlayStation Gen Thirteen game. It never came out. They did make a Gen 13 animated movie, but nobody fucking saw it except for me and Ben. And only because I bought it off eBay and then I gave it to Ben when I was done watching it and was like, Here, Here you'll enjoy this. And Ben's like, no. <laughs> and I watched it. And it I was, was like, why did you give this to me? And it's awful because it's got E.G. Daly, Mark Hamill, everyone, uh, uh, Flea, Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah. as voice. Uh, I think Disney produced it. But, like, didn't want to... How come I've never seen this? Because I don't we own it. destroyed the disc. Well, I gave it to Ben, and Ben destroyed it, I guess. But it's free on YouTube. You could just look it up. And Marvel made Generation X. And I guess they're, the compromise was they couldn't call themselves Gen X. They called themselves Generation X. And Jubilee kind of, like, graduated from the X-Men and became the leader of this teenage team. And they got new X-Men, or Generation X members, including Husk and Skin oh. and Chamber and... 
Gaia, but Wait, not which the one... one. Which one of those is the one that could take their skin off and then make a bag out of it? That would be Husk. Okay. And actually, so Husk is, uh, her, her power wasn't just she could take her skin off and use it. She produced a new layer of skin that was compro- comprised of a new alloy. So she'd like be like, shit, I need to be metal. And then she'd be metal underneath. Like her, the next layer of skin would be metal or gold. How would she be able to tear, tear the, the metal off? Because she'd be made of, she'd take the rest of the flesh off and then she'd be made of metal and then she'd use that metal to dig under the metal skin. You see. Or rock. Or lava. <laughs> I'll be lava! Oh, this is a bad idea! Oh no! It's like I'm a garbage bag trying to retain water. Could, could she be like food? I don't think they explain. I am chicken fingers! Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think she just fall apart! <laughs> yeah. No, she's oh. one big chicken finger. Oh, uh, she could yeah. be like, you know, like, what was it? Uh, fruit by the foot. What? She be made of fruit by the foot? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm hungry. Because <laughs> it just keeps going. No, but there's... It's fruit by the foot. Oh, man. There's about, body what, underneath. What about, you know, what was it? Bubble tape. That's it. Yeah, she made a bubble she's tape. She's six feet of bubble gum. For you. Not them. <laughs> and yeah, and in fact, Generation X, Bringing It Back, was kind of like a book for you and not them. It was about teenagers. They are their own team. They are their own new characters who are lame and terrible. Did they hey, also have a bald guy in a wheelchair? No, their team was led by Banshee and Emma Frost. I bet they high five. Wait a, lot. a minute. What? We watched that. We did. We watched a whole movie that Fox made. Yeah. Starring that team. and Except Jubilee. Yeah, no Jubilee. And, and was Husk. In. Julie, Julie was, was in it? it. Husk? No. No, I said Husk. No, no Husk. I said Husk was Just Skin. Just, skin was the main character. Because I really wanted to see Husk. I know. That was too expensive. That movie sucked. It's fucking abysmal. You should watch it. It's on Netflix. But don't watch it without our commentary. I'm sorry, not Netflix. It's just on YouTube. It's on YouTube. It's No, Netflix wouldn't touch that with a 10 meter cattle prod. That's just a disaster and a half. But if you have an hour and a half to waste, watch that Generation X movie because it's fucking abysmal but it's basically the same premise where banshee and emma frost have a have a, a, a their own mansion in uh, in in massachusetts so it's like a different place but still you know east coast urban. new englandy yeah what the hell would emma frost and banshee hang out uh banshee was drawn very hot back then he had a kind of, oh. had kind of like a five o'clock shadow he didn't wear like the wing outfit that he used to have. Because you know what I'm thinking of, and I'm like, I can't imagine her being like, yo, with like this the guy. With, with like the shock of you know, Aaron okay. Gobra hair, and yeah, no, he was he had a buzz cut, like uh, facial hair. He wore a jacket, like I, everybody did I, back I then. I guess she could like mentally project a different image. person yeah, over him. Yeah, yeah, she's like, um. huh. but then again, well, then why would she <laughs> be with anyone? She could just do that. That's really funny. Like, my vibrator's now anyone I want. I mean, like... It's an Antonio Banderas love doll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now you're alive. Yeah. Uh, well, she's telekinetic, right? Yeah. Anyway, she goes to just trick her own mind by using her telepathy into thinking that she's, like, you know, with some awesome dude. In any be, case... This really is getting hard. weird. They were really hard to yeah. go out to dinner with her and know that. Yeah. Who am I? Like, Who am I? Now? Who are you making me? <laughs> you're having a really good time. I'm Brad Pitt, aren't I? Damn it! Can you, like, make me think I'm Brad Pitt, too, so that at least I'll enjoy it? Or, like, maybe everyone else in the restaurant around <laughs> us? Yeah. I'd She's like a little bit of attention. I'm fucking Banshee. No one cares about me. Because <laughs> he uses his voice to fly. <laughs> so, anyway. I remember uh, that from first class. Yeah. yeah. He's in that, too. God, that was bad. He's great. He's so great, they killed him in the next movie. <laughs> then they ended that, because that was stupid. And, uh, uh, I think Jubilee and Skin quit and like went to go become actors on the west coast and they were like let's try this fuck it being a superhero let's just be but like skin was hispanic and jubilee was chinese american so they kept getting typecast so they quit that and then and re- he like he kept getting typecast as like you know the stunt people's airbag kind right of thing. exactly <laughs> he was basically peter griffin in that episode yep. where he has no bones <laughs> that's okay so yeah so he, um, so then they quit that and then, uh, joined the X-Men right in time for, uh, Jubilee to be crucified by... I'm wait, sorry, what? Yeah, uh... Wait, like, on television? Like, you know, like... Oh, oh with okay. bad publicity? Yeah. No, like, with a cross. There was, this was during a book, uh, during an, an X event that no one talks about called Operation Zero Tolerance. It came right on the heels of Onslaught. So X-Men's popularity in the public eye was, like, the lowest ever been. And that was the time for Villain Bastion 
to rise. And Bastion used his influence and power to, like, set an example. And he crucified, I think it was Skin and Jubilee on the lawn of the X-Mansion. And uh, they saved Jubilee. And then Jubilee's like, fuck being an X-Man. And then we have this book. <laughs> wow. She should have just stayed in Hollywood. Yeah, right? Uh, this is just one step in many attempts to make Jubilee interesting, relevant, or trying different stuff. And it's before they turn Jubilee into a vampire. All right. Bleh. 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 Because she Bleh. really did turn into a vampire. Like, Bleh. after this, they were like, ah. Because, okay, Robert Kirkman steps in to write this Jubilee book, which is basically just another relaunch for Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee finds out that she... You know, while her parents are dead, she has an aunt uh, named Aunt Hope, who is... Stop rich. naming people Hope! No, 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 that's... Yeah. She, uh... But Aunt Hope is just, like, every teenager's dream. She's immeasurably wealthy. She's really hands-off. She just, like, blank check kind of thing. Leaves prescription drugs all around the house? I don't know about is that. Is she not real? No, she's real. But you, there is something up with her immediately. Okay, it's not like Emma Frost is like being like, man, yeah. Jubilee had a really hard time. Like give her a family and stuff. Yeah, and then take it away from her at some point. <laughs> she got burned at the stake almost. I yeah. mean, let's just give her a break. Yeah. So she, uh, so she moves in, and uh, you know, Aunt Hope is like, here's this, here's your room. It's basically like out of a magazine for teenagers. So here you go. And Jubilee hates it because Jubilee is too cool for school. And okay, so here's the thing about this book. It's a six issue miniseries, but it was intended to be a series starring Jubilee. I guess for teenagers or preteens. I think this is supposed to be Marvel's attempt to give people an incontinuity all ages comic starring a established strong female character. I think that was the yeah. idea. And on paper it makes sense and it really is not a bad move, I guess. Uh and but they got the absolute wrongest team at the worst time to do this. They got Robert Kirkman, who doesn't write this shit. And you can tell. And it's basically... I can see that they're trying to do a book for teenagers. Or for preteens. It's really for like 12, 13 year olds. So we're like, I, like, oh cool, that could be me. you know. And then you get old enough to be them, and then you're like, I don't want to be that. Uh, and you find that life is actually more complicated than a comic book can convey. And he is just writing it the way he thinks teenagers are. From the perspective of, like, a 45-year-old man. He's like, so they're stupid. They're, like, assholes. Like, Get Jub off my lawn. Yeah, Jubilee is a complete asshole in this comic. And I don't mean, like, she's kicking puppies, like pushing elderly people in the street. <laughs> she's just, she's just, she's too cool for school. You know what I mean? She's yeah. sassy and, and like a, like she's punk rock, babe. And it's not working. She, she shows up and she's like, hey, Aunt Hope, whatever. Yeah. And she gets her cool room that's beautiful and whatever. And Robert Kirkman's like, and because she's a teenager, she thinks it sucks because that's how she would act. Because that's what teenagers think. When you give them something nice, they're like, fuck you, yeah, right, yeah. So she hates it, and we get introduced to her, like, manservant Brad, who is, like, a butler, who lives in this mansion, who is, like, dangerously young. You know, he's, like, 25, and he's, like, he looks like Brad Pitt, and he lives in the house, and he's got a cool room. Like, he's got the room that Kirkman wishes he had. You know, he's just, you know, hanging out. Sorry, how old is she in this? She's 16. So, what? We make her old enough to ride a scooter. Right. But, but not like, old did, enough to drive just, a car. She was leading... She was... Yeah, she was leading Generation X. She was working at the X Mansion, or at, at, for Xavier. And then she's like, okay, that experience was tough. But she's 16. Yeah. Okay. So now she's 16 and she lives in was California. she 16 when she was leading Generation X? I guess. Okay. She was 16 when she got burned at the stake. No, crucified. Crucified, crucified is different. Time. Very different. Yeah. There are a lot of artists who worked on this. Well, it's it's not that it shows, but the art is really terrible. The cover art is not bad. Well, he and did issue six. Who did? Casey, the cover artist? Casey Jones. Well, he's trying to emulate the... Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
awesome. <laughs> That's what he did after. Yeah, after he after quit the turtles. the turtles. Yeah. Well, Casey Jones is trying to emulate the style that was set up throughout the whole book. And oh. it doesn't work. Okay. It's just so jarring and weird and oddly proportioned, and I, I don't get it. But anyway, Jubilee goes to high school, and it's just Jubilee in high school. Like, what would Jubilee be like in high school? You know, in a real high school. Like a public high school. That's the book? Yeah. It's a high school book. It's a teen drama. It's CW. She does nothing associated with supervillains. No. No other mutants. There One are kid at the school is probably being picked on. No, okay, uh, sh- okay. So Jubilee goes to school. She's like, ugh, high school. <clears throat> Even though I've never been there, I know how stupid and lame it is because I'm a teenager. And she runs into this uh, girl named Meg, who is blonde, has glasses, is thin, and was picked on in high school. So, you know, whatever. But for no reason, she's an outcast. But Meg is like the punching bag for the school and she immediately meets up with jubilee jubilee is like you're cool or no jubilee is like you're lame i'm your friend now guess what you're welcome and like just completely makes friends with her as a way of being like i don't know anybody in this school so i guess i'll be friends with you and maybe you'll get some brownie points because i'm new and people think i'm awesome and meg is like yeah so and meg is excited and and grateful because this new cool person is friends with her and then they're, that's where their relationship is. Just Jubilee taking Meg to the mall. And Meg being like, this is how the world works at this crappy high school. And Jubilee being like, nah. And then that's it. That's the whole book. That's lame. Jubilee's like, oh, by the way, uh, if you hang out with me, there's a chance you might be crucified. That's right. You might get crucified. I, I can't say that that won't happen. And I can't promise it won't happen. <laughs> but you also might get a couple of notches in popularity. Uh, so... You also have to do my homework. Right. Uh, there's, like, this blonde football star named Dale hanging out with this, like, with this total bitch. And I say that because, like, that's what she is. Like, that's what the character is. She's jealous and suspicious and needy and petty. And, like, she legitimately beats up girls that Dale will flirt with. And, uh, flirt, uh, and Dale talks to Jubilee and Jubilee's like, Oh, there's like this awful shot of her like in the middle of the hallway and like she can barely stand and her like legs are closed together and she's like, duh, like she's melting from the sight of Dale. Because Dale is just so Dale. Like you went to fucking the X-Men school. You hung out with the buffest, hot, you were, you literally rubbed elbows with Gambit, who was unarguably the sexiest man from the 90s. And you mean to tell me that this... 17 year old asshole has no idea how to please you is like the sexiest thing you've ever seen he's he would he would just like look at dale dale would just die or his, at least his penis would just shrivel up and crawl <laughs> onto his body like whatever so anyway she's she's so attracted to dale and then jubilee is attacked by the girlfriend and her cronies in the girl's locker room she uses her powers and she uses her powers and then we have a gay allegory where uh, she goes to the principal's office, and the principal's like, I didn't like you from the start, and now that I know that you're a mutant, like, you needed to let us know that in advance. And she's like, oh, we need to, like, register and let you know, like, should I put that on my application, like, that I'm mutant, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And, and then uh, she blasts him through the right, office. she should have just blew that, but no. And he's just, he's, and that's, that's, uh, that's Carlton, uh, the principal, who's also banging the head of the guidance. See what, how this is a, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, he basically is Carlton Banks, but, like, more stuffy and more, like, sar- he's more... He's cooler than Carlton Banks. He's not cool, because he, he's, he's a stuffy, needs-to-loosen-up principal. Oh. He's Mr. Weatherby? Yeah. Yeah, he's a black Mr. Weatherby. And he's also stooping the head of the guidance department. And the head of the guidance department is, like... This young mutant here has had a rough life, and she's had a lot of experience with different people. Maybe she could do some good. So, rather than expel her for attacking students, even though she was attacked herself, you know, it's like, whatever. It's every teen bullshit thing you've ever seen. That's the guidance counselor? Yeah. Wearing jeans, a blue t-shirt, and a headband. She's, uh, she's cool. I thought that was a student. No. See what I mean? That the art? Oh, yeah. No, she's cool. And she's also stripping the, t- the, the principal. And she keeps calling him Carlton, and he's like, it's not Mr. Carlton. Like, it, it's not Carlton, it's Mr. whatever my name is. Like it's Mr. Weatherby. Yeah, it's Mr. Weatherby. So Mr. Weatherby and this, and this woman, and she's a free spirit and he's a stuffy guy. See what I mean? Like, they gotta learn from each other, yeah, you know? 
Like she's a free spirit, spirits. and he's yeah, and like they see how everyone's learning a lesson about like being being young. So anyway, uh, the, you keep they, showing me the back of this comic, and you just like yeah. The, this is does Wolverine ever show up? Yeah. Right Does after he threaten the... a boyfriend? Right, keep going, keep yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, Jubilee makes friends with, with, with Meg. She's on the outs of the principal. The guidance counselor wants her to do well. And because the principal wants to expel her, uh, you know, the guidance counselor comes up with an alternative where she has to... Like, they blackmail her into becoming, like, a, a, a student counselor for troubled teens. Okay. So there's this young African-American kid who used to get good grades, but then he fell in with a gang, and now the grades are slipping, and they're worried he's not doing well. And they figure since Jubilee was homeless and an X-Man, that maybe she might be able to, you know, give him some tough love and, and fix him. You were involved with a gang, right? Right! What? <laughs> no, it was no, part, part of a elite fighting team. organization. <laughs> yeah, it's a gang. Yeah, but of minorities. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty much a gang for us. Uh, just help him. Yeah, exactly. So... You know, and Jubilee is, of course, too too cool for school. Hates doing this. She shows up. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. You know, like the guidance counselor's kind of giving her options. Like, well, here's here's an example of what you might experience. Like, my boyfriend is pressuring me to have sex, and I'm not ready, but I don't want to break up with him. What do I do? She's like, dump him. And she's like, no, that's not what you do. And it's like, no, but that is what you do. Fuck that guy. Like, dump him. Like, no, she's right. But that's Kirkman being like, yeah, no, right. That teenage problems are really easy to solve when you're a 45 year old white man. So let me just put my agenda through this teenage girl. Especially when you come up with really shitty teenage problems. Yeah. That are really easy to solve when you just look at them from black and white perspective. So anyway, uh, she runs... She, she's, she befriends this you know, disaffected teen uh, by going to the gang and appealing to Shooter, the gang leader, who is Jubilee's age. That is a fantastic name. Yeah. He's called that because his mutant ability is basically Jubilees, but he's focused it into an ability where he can, like, make a fake gun with his fingers and then shoot, like, plasmoids from his hands. Uh, so, she could do that, but she's got, like, ten guns. Yeah! <laughs> well, she also trained under Xavier, so she knows how to use it better. Um, and then she'd be called, like, pew, pew. Yeah, she, pew, pew. she never does that. She can get her uh, hands spinning and she becomes a Gatling gun or something. Jubilee can, like, focus the totality of her powers, it, not into, like, a Psy Blade or anything like Psylocke, but, like, she can make... She's more powerful than she thinks, or that she is portrayed often. In this, she can... She's basically the equivalent of, like, a flashbulb. Like, she's like, Hua! And they got... And they're like, ow, my eyes! And she escapes. She doesn't, like, shoot them with energy and, like, blow their heads off. Which is what would happen, because she's tr- she's literally been the leader of an X-team. And now she's, like, under the heel of some bitch in high school. Wow. Yeah. But no, she's strong and independent and cool, and look, all teenagers are going to uh, love this I mean, character. like, to be fair, though, I mean, like, this seems a lot better than where she just left. Yes. Oh, yeah, from Crucifixion, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just... <laughs> a- <laughs> no, it's just... A- I don't know. She has to deal with this shooter guy? It yeah. kind of lame. Well, and so she's basically like, shooter, like, you you know, this kid, he's doing well, and he's like, oh, you didn't tell me that he was getting that he was getting good grades, and then he had options. No, if he's got... Uh, and he's just... He's a gang leader with a heart of gold who's actually 17, and he and... You know, they're clearly setting up this romance between Jubilee and the gang leader, and so the gang leader is like, hey kid who was getting good grades until you joined this gang you're out of the gang because you can make a future for yourself get out and you know instead of disassembling the gang yeah oh no well you know this, well we need the gang well he's like i'm in, like this is my like i made i made a name for myself like i've built a life here like i entered the workforce my name is shooter xavier <laughs> exactly so, i have a gang for special yeah people i would if it was a gang of mutants that'd be kind of neat it's not it's a gang for people who steal cars and shit so, uh, eventually, the guidance counselor, who was really nice uh, to Jubilee, her car is stolen, so Jubilee goes to the gang leader, and she's like, let's find the guidance counselor's car, and so they do, but it winds up getting roped up with other gangs who steal cars, and who cares? Well, because they, they have one night to steal a whole bunch of really expensive cars. Yeah. yeah. So. And then Jubilee screws it all up. Right. That sucks. Yeah. But they do get to listen to Lowrider. Yeah. It's called Gun in 60 Seconds. (laughs) 
So, there's also this other plot that they keep, like, throwing hints at where Aunt Hope is actually a secret assassin. No. She's a badass assassin. And nope. she uses, like, her cool... Manservant. Yeah, yeah he, they're, they're, they're an assassin team. And they're not like a couple or anything, but they, they, they work together and but, they go on missions. But boy, do they bang. They must, right? I mean, like, they must. But anyway. Uh, and of course, Jubilee is like, she's got a crush on Brad, the cute house servant. She's got a crush on Shooter, the gang leader. She's got a crush on Dale, the high school sweetheart. Like, she's just boy crazy in this book. All right. And uh, so eventually they get the car back. That plot's solved. Uh, the assassin plot is just... You know, occasionally the aunt will come home late and she'll be like, Ooh, I had too much to drink at one of those cocktail parties. But in reality, she got shot and they're trying to, like, nurse her back to health. That seems, like, more interesting. It is way more interesting and it is completely in the background of this series. Uh, so, you know, it's just that. And then Jubilee just, like, kind of... And eventually... Do people call her Jubilee in this? Yes, because her name's Jubilation Lee. I know it is. I'm just wondering. Yeah, no, she tells them, like, my, you can call me Jubilee. They have that name scene in class where, you know, Jubilation, That's is there anything you want to be called? Yep. And, uh, and you know, eventually uh, Wolverine calls her up because they used to be a team. They used to be friends. They Like, that relationship has always been maintained. Throughout every incarnation of Jubilee, the Jubilee-Wolverine relationship has always been like something okay and so you know wolverine's like hey how, how'd the move go and uh, he actually he tries to call her he can't get her and then later jubilee calls him and he's fighting ninjas and he's like i'll call you back <laughs> and then later uh wolverine shows oh, yeah. up <laughs> and then later like wolverine actually winds up like crashing at her aunt's place because the book got canceled and we gotta sell more issues so maybe wolverine will show up so Wolverine shows up. Oh, is your book dying? Toss Wolverine in there. That's right. It's like Spider-Man. Yep. I mean, it is. It's the Wolverine-Spider-Man dynamic. So, eventually, uh, things come to a head with the ant plot where she bites off two, more than she can chew. She's going to do one last mission before she retires to take care of Jubilee for good. And uh, Shooter and Jubilee go to the prom together. And uh, they go there for like two seconds. And then they're like... This is lame. Proms are for losers. And then they go back to Jubilee's house, I guess, to hook up. But Wolverine shows up, and Wolverine's like, who's this, and what's going on here, Snicked? And she's like, no, 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 it's cool. He's just a gang leader. Yeah, exactly! Yeah. Can imagine Shooter being like, is that... Did you... What? <laughs> yeah. Am I the next guy here? No, he's, because... He, he does... He No, Shooter's actually like, is that Wolverine? Like, he knows Wolverine. I think he's seen him before. All mutants know other mutants. Well, Wolverine is a high-profile X-Man and Avenger at this point. I just assumed it was like, you're short and you have scruffy sideburns. You must be Wolverine. You must be Wolverine. No. I'm just Canadian. <laughs> so. I bet Joel gets mistaken for Wolverine all the time. Oh, yeah. No no question. Uh, so, uh, the ant plot, you know, they they, uh, they get shot up big time. Uh, the ant gets pinned down in a big, like, battle and she makes Brad leave. And she's like, Brad, get out of there and live for me! And then Brad gets back to the to the uh, uh, house. It's like everything's coming to a head, right? Like, uh, Shooter and Jubilee come to the house to hook up. Then Wolverine shows up. Then Brad shows up. And then the ant shows up on a stolen motorcycle. And then the the like evil bad guys that she was fighting all show up as well. And, uh, and then what happens? Uh, and then someone says, you picked the wrong house. Yeah. And then the ant blows up the house and kills all the bad guys. And Wolverine gets Brad and Shooter and Jubilee out of there. And I guess the ant dies? Man, she was only one day from retirement. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, so then, and then literally, like, so we have this whole thing, right? We have, like, we have, like, 18 different characters I, I, I think I've mentioned all the ones that have names, but the point is, like, there's a billion characters, there's this whole plot with this sinister bad guy and Aunt Hope having to battle him. Yeah, and is how... this him? Yeah, this is he. He's a monocle. Yeah, he's a real he's serious... He's a monocle and a bow tie and a cane. He has a lot of accessories. He has he a lot of rich guy accessories. He does. He's he also little... smoking, or is that a gun? It's got a smoking gun. Oh. Yeah. He literally has a smoking gun. Yeah. He's a, he is, he is a 
Mad Lib of supervillain bullshit. <laughs> and uh, no, there are no balls or butts in there. That's true. <laughs> so uh, everything comes to a head. We've created all these characters, and then clearly the book got canceled. And they're like, end it. So as it ends, the house blows up. The bit. aunt dies. The uh, Brad leaves, uh, and Jubilee gets into a cab with Wolverine. And Shooter is like, hey, so. I guess you're leaving? And she's like, yeah, fuck living in California and having an aunt. I'm going to move back to New York and be with the X-Men. Would you like to join us? And he's like, no. <laughs> so he leaves. <laughs> and that's it. And the only, the only thing they leave open-ended is at the, end of the, at the end of the book, some like jogger, we have the, with this, the, the opening scene from a Law & Order episode where like some joggers run into the park and they find the aunt. And the ant has a cybernetic leg that has been blown off from the explosion. And you're like, dun dun dun, who gives a fuck we're never doing this again? So, like, is she... What, like, was she a robot? Is she a cyborg? She's a robot. Jubilee's entire family, including Jubilee, are just robots. Right. Oh, that's not... She that's just how they... have a mutant power. She's just having a problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's how they built the perfect teenager. <laughs> She's really unnecessarily yellow. Yes. That's the first thing I noticed, and I was like... Am I a racist? No, no, they're racist because they made her Bert from Bert and Ernie yellow. Yeah, and in some of the coloring, yeah, like that's she looks like she has jaundice. Really bad, and like it, but it varies kind of sometimes. Yeah, she also has a belt buckle here that says Jubes, because that used to be uh, Husk's nickname for her. Husk used to call her Jubes, and in fact, somebody calls her Jubes in this book. Just don't call me that. And you're like, okay. See, like, like here, better. Yeah, not so By bad. By the end, like, they just didn't care. No, they just were like, oh, fuck it, just end the book. Listen, at least you get to end it. What like, happens to Meg, though? Yeah, right? What happens to Meg? Who gives a shit? <laughs> oh, oh no, actually, they do wrap up Meg's fucking plot. What happens? Uh, She winds up hooking up with Dale, oh. the, the football star. Oh, oh, of course she does. So she gets to be popular and with the pretty boy. Oh, well, good for her. So she's only popular because she's with the pretty boy? Yeah. And she was friends with that mutant chick who, I guess, left or something. This is going to end well. I mean, who cares, right? It's over. We never see Meg again. Because, like, Shooter and Jubilee ditch the prom. So you don't think Missy's going to beat the hell out of her? No. No, because Dale what... broke up with Missy, like, three times throughout the course of the book. And keeps, like, flirting with the idea of going out with Jubilee. Plus, Jubilee blinded her. Yeah. When she flashed her in she, the... They got better. Room. They got better. Anyway. Jubilee by Robert Kirkman with art by Various. This was... This is a really interesting idea that right? just is not executed. Well, the idea of like being... Well. Okay, teen book. Uh, in continuity. Established character. New yeah. status quo. Like, this feels like NYX or like an attempt at Runaways. Or yeah. Young Avengers. Or... Uh, yeah. But it's not. Oh, if you want a good teen book. Oh, yeah. Read one. Read, read the first read, few volumes of yeah, Runaways. Yeah, read Vaughn's run on Runaways. Don't read Whedon's. It's awful. And it only gets worse from there. But, yeah. This is... Okay, so here's a funny story about getting this book. Uh, we were at Baltimore Comic Con, and I was getting a bunch of issues from suggestions that we got from the audience and suggestions we got from uh, some major creators. And uh, I saw this, and I'm like, they made a Jubilee book? And I got, I, I picked it up along with a bunch of other titles, and the guy who was selling it to me was using one of those iPhone credit card swipe things, and he couldn't make it work, and so he couldn't complete the sale, and so I'm like, okay, fuck it, I don't care, and he goes, take this, and get it out of here. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. This has been a ridiculous episode of Backage. This is an episode... Benny, the comic story, and I fought over this book. He's like, ooh, Jubilee has a big history. Like, give me that book. And I'm like, this is my book. They gave it to me. And he's like, you're not going to do it. And I'm like, oh, yeah? I'll show you. Here it is. Episode 84 of Back Issues. Jubilee. I think he fooled you. I think he did. One of the issue titles is Dude Wears Her Car. They're all, all the titles. There's one episode, there's one issue called Dance Dance Revolution. Because it's about them going to the dance. There's no cleverness involved. Hard knocks with Shane Shooter. That was that's not even. That's, that's not just. Anything. That's just anything. Yeah. No, that's like hard knock life. Yeah, that delightful 
song they, from Annie. The yeah, that fresh, children love. That no, that they changed in, when they made it a hip hop song. Yeah. The Fresh Princess of Bel Air. Well, she moved into Bel Air. Did she come from West Philadelphia? No, Born she in, came from Westchester. Born and, and actually, raised. She, she technically came from Beverly Hills anyway. As like, a mutant is how she spent most of her days. <laughs> Chilling out with X Men, beating some guys. Yeah, this episode is over. Thank you all for watching, everybody. <laughs> and hey, uh, if you want to meet us, God knows why, uh, you can stop by uh, the New York Comic. Yeah, stop by the New York Comic Con with all those sold out tickets. If you have a ticket to New York Comic Con, you want to come meet us. <laughs> we're going to be there. Uh, I'll be there from Thursday to Sunday, but the team's going to be there on uh, Saturday. From 11 to 1 at the Valiant booth. That's booth 1635. And also, don't forget to check out our Patreon. We got a Patreon to help make Comic Pop better. And in fact, if you might have noticed, this video might look a little bit higher quality. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that more in the future as to why. But uh, if you go to patreon.com slash comic pop, you'll be able to check it out. See if it's right for you. See if the, any of those uh, rewards appeal to you in any way. So... Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. We'll see you guys next time with an all-new episode of Back Issues. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Does a mole, baby. Chili fry. I can't think of any other Jubilee quotes. Except for, like, I just want to go home. I've I got one! That's literally, <laughs> you had one and it was the line. That's amazing. That's perfect. Yeah. Not even ended on a blue. No. Blue. <laughs> <laughs>